Shalom, my brothers and sisters. May the spirit of Yahweh continue to bless you in all ways. And may you continue to keep the commandments. I would like to open this up with a prayer and that we will continue with the lesson or we will commence with the lesson. Ayanaya Havahalahaya Ka Wada Washa Yeshara La Mawasha Ya Ka Why am Yahawa, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior? Ah Moraya Havaha At Shaka Wayatis Raka Ma batana yatsaraka alata yara apadaya yakaba. Thus said Yahweh that made you and formed you from the womb, which will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my sir. Kaha amara yahawaha. Maraaka ya akaba, why it is raka ya shara la alata ya raa kaha gaalata ya ka. But now thus said Yahweh that created you, O Jacob, and he that formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. These words are precious to us because of who we are and what we mean to Yahweh that he is communicating to us in these divine words. It is stated, and I like to start off with saying the 12 tribes of Israel is forever. We are a forever people. The reason why the 12 tribes of Israel will not fail is because of the word that came out of the mouth of Yahweh. Psalm 89, verse 34, my covenant will I not break, nor alter the things that has gone out of my mouth. Isaiah 55, verse 11, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall accomplish that which I please. Isaiah 40, verse 8, the grass withereth, the flower faded, but the word of Yahweh shall stand forever. Ecclesiasticus of the Apocrypha, um, chapter 37, verse 35. The days of the life of man may be numbered, but the days of Israel is innumerable. Jeremiah 33, verse 7. And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Yeshua to return and will build them as at the first. It is stated in Psalm 33, verse 6, by the word of Yahweh was the heavens made, by what came out of his mouth were the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. So these things that have been said concerning us, telling us who we are as a people, that we are a divine people, a people that we have no end, and therefore the tribes of Israel is forever. Jeremiah 31, chapter 31, verse 35 to 36. Thus said Yahweh, which give the sun for light by day and the ordinance of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves there are roar. Yahweh of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart, those things that structure the heaven depart from before me, said Yahweh, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So as they attempt to 
destroy us as a people is worthless because we are indestructible by the words of Yahweh God. See, his words. It also says in Obidai, verse 11, in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captives, his force and foreigners entered into the gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Even thou was as one of them, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of your brother. In other words, there's Esau, my brothers, sticking his nose in the circumstances to make it more, more rigorous for us. So he said, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of your brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of his distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gates of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in a crossway to cut off those that did escape, neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. Yes, they were told not to touch no one, everyone that's in where they now call Israel, but original name was Jerusalem. They're being cut off. They're having problem after problem. Why? Because they were not supposed to go in there is what's supposed to be left alone. But they went in there, and all it is is confusion. And that's what Esau brings with him. And Ishmael is confusion against his brother Jacob. As it states in Psalm 134, verse 7 to 9, Remember, Yahweh, the children of Edom, Esau, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, race it, race it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughters of Babylon, who are to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewarded you as you have served us. Happy shall he be that take and dash you, your little ones, against the stone. Blessed be the name of Yahweh, who is the distributor, distributor of righteousness. My brother Esau cannot see what is ahead of them because he has bathed himself in the luxury of hate against his brother and entice others to follow in this wicked darkness of hating his own brother. Blessed be the name of Yahweh that if it wasn't for him, we would not exist. So we are saying, blessed be the name of your house, for he is God forever and ever. Amos 1, verse 11, because he did pursue his brother with the sword and did cast off all pity. The days of mourning for my father is at hand, and I shall what? I shall slay my brother. Who was Jacob's brother? Who is Esau's brother? Jacob brother is Esau, and Esau, brother, is Jacob. And Yahweh said he hated Esau because of what the cruelty that he's leached on his brother. Anyway, it says in in um, Second Ezra of the Apocrypha, chapter 6, verse 8 to 9, and he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau was born, of him. Jacob's hand held fast the heel of Esau, for Esau is the end of the world, meaning the end of the people. We can see it. If you talked about 50 years ago, you would never believe America would be in the circumstances that has evolved in the presence as we see it this day. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. You know, as it said, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob 
is the beginning of it that follows. May Yahweh bless his holy, righteous, and honorable name. You know, there are few, very few things that are forever. Isaiah 40, verse 8, the word of Yahweh shall stand forever. Psalm 89, verse 2, mercy shall be built up forever. Psalm 79, verse 69, the earth which he has established is forever. Why the 12 tribes of Israel is forever? They were created for Yahweh's pur purpose. As is stated in Isaiah 43, verse 15, I am Yahweh, the Holy One, the creator of Israel, your king. He says, he created these people. It told in Psalm 89, verse 4, it says, your seed will I establish forever and build up your throne to all generation. So Yahweh is telling me, he says, these people I created. We were created by Yahweh, his mouth, and we are sustained by the words that have come out of his mouth. In Isaiah 43, verse 21, this people I formed for myself to show forth my praise. That's your purpose. Hosea chapter 2, verse 19, I will betroth, I will marry you unto me forever. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6, For thou art a holy people unto Yahweh your God. Yahweh your God has chosen you to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. That's why you was created as to be a special people, and you are a special people. Yahweh did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people, but because Yahweh loved you, he said, I've loved you with an everlasting love. And because he would keep his oath, his promise, his word, which has come out of his mouth, which he has sworn on to your fathers, has Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the house of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he said, and, and, and Yahweh tells you, he says, know therefore that Yahweh thy God, he is the faithful God, which keepeth covenants and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So he's telling you, he says, I'm not going to let your hand go. You, Israel, I made you for my purpose. Keep these commandments. Keep the Shabbat. Keep the holidays. Rehearse these righteous acts. Who are the righteous acts? The righteous acts of your house. As it says, while you are in this human existence, you should search for the absolute truth with all diligence. When you find what you think is the absolute truth, you must examine it with scrutiny. He said, I, this, you know, you say this is the truth, then you examine it. You know, because there's a way that seems it right. It doesn't make it right. So you have to scrutinize and examine it. And as it says here, Proverbs um, chapter 4, verse 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. And where will we get this understanding? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 6. It says, keep therefore and do therefore. This is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations. So by us rehearsing these righteous acts, that's why in Judges 5, verse 11, it says, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of Yahweh. This is Yahweh's uh, righteous acts that we are rehearsing. This is the 12 tribes of Israel, absolute belief, rehearsing the righteous acts of Yahweh. That's our total understanding, our total belief, our total commitment is to serve Yahweh God by keeping 
his commandments by serving him. I cannot can repeat this, but over and over so that you'll know the severity, the importance of being obedient to Yahweh's word. There's nothing greater than for you but to serve your God with all your mind, with all your body, with all your might. This is the total satisfaction of life for all of Israel. You know, Yahweh says, serve me, serve him, and keep his commandments. And this is our total commitment to Yahweh, to serve him with all our mind, with all our body, with all our might. And it takes time. That's why I'm totally, I rehearse it in your ears continuously to keep the commandments. It says, the lie has no light in darkness. Only the truth has light in darkness. See, the lie will reveal itself, you know, because it has no light. But when the truth comes, the truth has light. And, and, and because you can see that it has light, it reveals that that's a lie. But you and Sam said, so when we look at it, say the 12 tribes of Israel is attached to, to that which is, which is perfect. The name is perfect. Therefore, the people are perfect. You are a perfect people. And the persons that is imperfect is cast out. See, you can't stay in there if you're not perfect. It will cast you out. That's why you see the Israelites, they say, I don't want nothing to do with Israel. Because it's not that they don't want anything to do with it. The spirit don't want nothing to do with them. And as it says in Psalm 124, verse 8, our help is in the name of Yahweh, who's Yahweh who made heaven and earth. In other words, his name is our total help. Psalm 148, verse 13, let them praise the name of Yahweh, for his name alone is excellent. Proverbs 18, verse 10, the name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it in safe. And see, you cannot enter into that name in safety without righteousness. And righteousness comes from what? Keeping the law, rehearsing the law. Psalm 99, verse 3, let them praise your great and terrible name, for it is holy. He said that name is terrible. So to deal with his name, to be anointed in his name, that's why it's in Malachi verse 1 to 14. For my name, they they put dreadful, but it's in Hebrew, terrible among the nations. He says, my name is terrible among the nations. And it came to a point that as we go to Genesis and we begin to read, um, starting at Genesis chapter 48, starting at verse 1. And it came to pass after those things that one told Joseph, Behold, thy father is sick, and he, he took him with him, his two sons, Manet, Manasseh and Ephraim. So he said, my father is sick. So he went to his father because his father is sick. And he said to him, and the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lad. And the lads is Manasseh and Ephraim. He said, I want you to bless me. He told the angel, he said, this was an angel. He said, the angel which redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named on them. And the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Now, this is very important. He says, he didn't say, I'm going to leave them an inheritance of jewelry, uh, of land. He said, I want my name to be put on them. Israel, what is your name? Israel. Well, who gave you that name, Israel? The angel 
gave you that name. He said, your name shall be no more Jacob, but Yisrael. He said, and this told you, he says in the book of Proverbs 22, verse 1, he said, a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and the loving favors rather than silver and gold. He said, a good name is to be desired, to be favored, to be chosen. A good name, he's given him his name. He said, and what was Jacob's name? Israel. You're talking about generational wealth? There's your wealth, your name, you have it. You can go all through the universe, but at the same time, being obedient to the commandments is essential to, to going, even in the book of Ecclesiastes 7, chapter 7, verse 1, a good name is better than precious ointment. A good name, my brothers and sisters. And you should got God that name and know how, just like you guard the name of your God, it is a powerful name. It is your it is your your generational wealth, where where all these other things will perish. A, a name, what you know, the Hashemayim in Hebrew means the names. They say heavens, but if you look at what the word in the Hebrew, it means the names. If you turn around, turn around the the, the name of Moses, it means the name. You understand? So. You know, you have to be responsible to know that you are a great people and you have the name of Yahweh God upon you. He said, put my name upon him. He said, he said, he said, your father is sick. And he said, well, you know, like, let's go and get an inheritance because he made a will. Nah, he said, put my name on him. Put my name. It says, it says, um, Proverbs 14, verse 12. There is a way which seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So you have to calculate. It said, for the leaders of this people cause them to error, and they that are led of them are destroyed. That's Isaiah 9, verse 16. He said, you, because you have to understand the importance of leadership. Leaders are the confidence of the people. The people get their confidence from the leader. When there is no confidence in the leaders, eventually there comes where there is no confidence in the people. And this is what you're seeing in America now. They have no confidence in their leadership. So the people are scattered. You got all these Im immigrants in here, migrants, seekers, um, you know, uh, um, coming in, and they haven't taken care of the first. That's you, and therefore you have you are losing confidence because you can see there's no order. Confidence that you get order from your leaders that give you confidence in there. For for though your people Israel be as the sands of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. Only a small remnant. Why? Because when you look at it, they have to make better choices. They have to scrutinize. It says Israel will be gathered as stated, as it stated in Jeremiah 3, verse 14, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you on to Zion. Isaiah 27, verse 12, and ye shall be gathered one by one, you children of Israel. So yeah, yeah, I would told you, your leadership, even in this country, is gone. And you ask yourself, what is wrong with the people? The wrong with the people is that it's too much innocent blood. They have shed too much innocent blood. In the book of Second Ezra, you know, um, it states in chapter, what, 15 of the Apocrypha, it says, behold, the innocent and the righteous blood. He said, the innocent and the righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just complained continuously. He said, man, 
they're complaining. They want these people. See, you got to understand is that the people that talk about murdering and depopulation, these are just people. They're, they're small people, and they hurt too. You kick them, and they'll say, ouch. But don't think that, you know, they have a position of power, and, and, and they don't understand that that position of power will leave them, and therefore they 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 will suffer for their misuse of their position of power, and it is people they 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 they're no no different than you. You you look at any tyrant, Idi Amin, Papa Doc, you know look at them, Hitler, you know Mussolini, Stalin, all of them are dead. Look at all your presidents. The ones that didn't do good by it, they all dead. And all the rest of them going to die. So the point is, these are just men. And they have power. They have nuclear power. That's, you know, they're just tiny, little, itty-bitty men. That's it. And 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 they bleed, too. They, they eat. They go to the bathroom. You understand? So we, you have to understand, these are not strong men. Strong men and men of character, dignity, and people of spiritual uh, um, essence, they don't do this. They have messed up a whole entire planet. And they ain't coming back, my brothers and sisters, because when they had time for it to come back. But you have to find a way. And I've told you, keeping the commandments, doing your Howard's will. And I will say it over and over and over. And it's not about death to you. Forget about dying. You know, when you read this book, this book is about, a ever, this is the everlasting book of life. And as it says here in Numbers chapter 35, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein you are, for blood it defiles the land, and the land cannot be clean of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of them that shed it. Man, the way they treated us and lynched us and what they have done and continuously do in the United States of America to us, this land is dripping with innocent blood and is crying. What it says, uh, um, when, when Abel, you know, raised up and Cain and Abel, the story of Cain and Abel. And when he, when he murdered his brother, what did he say? Your brother's blood. Cain, your brother's blood is crying from the earth. It didn't say, but he said his blood is screaming from the earth, telling me, what did you do? And this is what is happening. And there's a lot of confusion because they want their head. They, you understand? Know they want them to get what they have. And that's why it says in Ecclesiastes 8, verse 11, because sen sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the hearts of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So he told me, he said, man, their heart is set to do evil. These are some evil people. And as it goes on in Isaiah 34, verse 2, for the indignation of Yahweh is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them he has delivered them to the slaughter. Yahweh has delivered them to the slaughter for their insensitive, like they own everything. They done bombed everything. They done messed up everything. And therefore they feel that there is no, there is no punishment for them because they said, because punishment is not expedient. And therefore they said, we don't see nothing happen. What's, what's, what's gonna happen? We don't believe in God. You know say I wouldn't believe in God either. If I did the hideous things you did, feeding our babies to crocodiles, raping the men. You have to understand, my black brothers and sisters in the United States of America, you're the only people that did not migrate here. You were brought here. What did what did the apocrypha say about strangers? When you invite them into your house, then strangers what will invite you out. Go back and read it. These people are in trouble. They have opened up their legs to everybody. 
They have never helped you. And if they thought about helping you, you never got it. So Yahweh has sent this plague. This is a plague of many different people speaking one language, Spanish. And therefore, they, they, they feel as a humanitarian. The humanitarian starts at home. You didn't help the people that was here. So I just wanted to embrace you, my brothers and sisters. I want to tell you, it has nothing to do, believe me, that Yahweh has called you not to be frightened, but to relax. And that's why he said, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. And what is the comfort? Is the words of Yahweh telling you, keep those commandments and you'll find you can walk through fire. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, they shall not be burned. You shall not be burned. Neither shall the flames be kindled upon you. These are some divine words. Isaiah 43, verse 2. These are words that you must hold on to. So I say, Ah, I take refuge in the words of Yahweh. I take refuge in the name of Yahweh. I take refuge in the spirit of Yahweh. No weapon that is formed against you, Israel. For in the secret places in the village, who do they seek to destroy? The poor, the helpless, the needy. There are no match. They have taken everything from us. And these migrants are going to take everything from them. They're going to suck this country dry. And they say, oh, wa watch and see. They have no love. And the people that really love this country is me and you. Oh, we have a beef with her because of the way she's treated. But at no time that you can ever say that we have this made her discomfortable concerning her security that we would tap in her computer system and sell information to foreign governments. That, that's not us. Go look at a book called Falcon and the Snowman. Them two boys were selling everything they could get their hand on. So I'm just saying to you, know who you are, what you are and that you have a respect and love for America. And our institution and indoctrination was ripped away from us by how we have been treated. We didn't treat our families like this. We didn't run away from our wives. We didn't do that. They taught us to have sex with our mothers, to have sex with each other, and they had sex with us. I mean, we didn't do that. They are, they are in, in Africa telling them, they said, no, we ain't into that. Well, we're not going to, we're not going to get, get, get into that. But I'm saying to you, stop blaming yourself and take on a new understanding of you. And may Yahweh bless you, my beloved. And may your days be sweet. And may you know, behold, I will bring them from the North country and gather them from the crust of the earth and with them the blind and them lame the woman with children and her that travail with child together a great company shall return may Yahweh bless you in your endeavors just keep the commandments and when the lights go out in America and it will go out I guarantee you I may not see it but I guarantee you these are that's why I've, you know, when you go into Isaiah, 
um, chapter 60, and he tell you, oh, it's going to go out. Oh, don't worry about it. When great darkness, gross darkness cover the people, gross darkness, not just darkness, gross darkness is going to cover the people. You understand? The, the, the communication and these satellites, they're going to go out, my brothers and sisters. These people are not strong people, but Yahweh has called you. He has called you. He said, my beloved, I don't want you to fear. I don't want, I, I don't, I don't want you to fear, my beloved. I want you to know that everything, it says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am Yahweh. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of his righteousness. Yahweh said, I'm going to hold you with my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against you shall be ashamed and confound. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with you shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that contend with thee. They that war against you shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. For I am Yahweh, your God, will hold your right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, thou worm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, I will help you, said Yahweh. And thou redeemer, what? The holy one of Israel. Who is the God that we serve? Our God. The God of what? Israel. So may your journey be sweet, may your life be long, and may you praise your God in all that is to be praised. And that means every breath that came out of your body, every morsel of food, every remnant that is upon you, that you close yourself with. Blessed be the name of Yahweh forever and ever. Amen. Shalom, my beloved. Forever. May the spirit of peace be with you. Shalom.